Folks, we have a big crowd of people here in Berkeley, California, taking action against the dairy industry. We are about to take a life-size, a life-size calf crate, a real calf crate, into a Whole Foods to show people how dairy cows and dairy calves are actually abused in the dairy industry. And not only that, we're going to be live streaming with a large large television into the gro grocery store from an actual dairy farm. So there will be a live stream going into the dairy farm. We'll be showing people real footage, live footage from inside the dairy farm and actually using a real calf crate to show people how horribly abused these dairy cows are. And for those of you who don't know, most people don't realize that dairy cows are some of the most abused animals on the planet. They're hooked up onto these metal pens, their babies are taken from them as they cry, and their babies die at an astronomically high rate. There's something like one million baby cows who die in dairy farms every year even before they get to the actual farm. They, they live in these horrible hutches where they can barely even stand up or turn around. And this is the reality of the dairy industry. And over the past few months, we've been asking companies like Whole Foods to show us the farms, show us where these dairy cows are actually being raised because on their packaging they say the dairy cows are raised well, that they're humane, that they're free range. And yet every time we ask them where are the farms, they will not give us an answer. So today we're taking over a hundred people into the Whole Foods to say directly to them, show us the farms. We want to see these so-called humane free range farms. And if they actually are as humane as the company says they are, then they should be willing to tell us. But they have not even been willing to answer our questions. So today we're going to take direct action and say that enough is enough. It's time for you to tell us the truth and show us the farms. And we need your support in doing that. So as always, one thing you can do is to share this live stream because the more people who share this live stream, the more powerful these actions are. And in the past, we've gotten more media coverage partly because of social media. If you saw the rescue we did of Rain last week, we were in Fox News partly because so many people were sharing this in social media that the mainstream media said, we need to cover this. So you guys can make a big difference for all of us. And you can see, we've got a big crew behind us. Let me just show you how many people are. There are a lot of people here today in person, but you can be with us online as well. And we need you there. So share this live stream now. And if you comment, um, share. Everyone else will see that you're sharing and it will incentivize other people to share as well. So some other facts about the dairy industry that are really important for all of you to know. Every single mother cow is forcibly impregnated. This is a violent abusive process where they reach into the mother cow's rectum with one hand and they reach into her vagina with the other as she's screaming in agony and force semen into her vaginal tract. And this happens to every single dairy cow every single time she's impregnated so she can produce more milk and then her baby is taken away, usually at just one day. Sometimes it's even less than one day. Sometimes the baby doesn't even get her colostrum. If you know anything about colostrum, every single baby mammal, whether it's a human being, a dog, a pig, or a cow, they need that colostrum from their mother's milk. That first day of milk provides crucial antibodies to keep these babies alive. But the industry is so greedy and wants so much milk from the mothers, they won't let the babies feed for even a single day. They give them colostrum replacement inside their poor little dairy crates. And as a result, many of these dairy cows die from diseases. Over 10% of dairy cows die in their first couple weeks of life because of the abusive conditions inside these farms. And they die of horrible diseases like scours, pneumonia, salmonella, E. coli. And many of you may know this, but dairy is actually one of the biggest causes of human diseases in our food system. So there have been multiple salmonella outbreaks, Campylobacter outbreaks, E. coli outbreaks, and, um, and many of you also know that there are an incredible number of hormones, partly to induce massive amounts of milk production. They're injecting these cows with a hormone called uh, bovine hormone. And even the cows who are not injected with hormones, they have a massive number of sex hormones traveling through their blood because they're forcibly impregnated over and over again. And we actually have our investigator here who rescued Roslyn from a dairy farm just a few months ago. And this is a picture of one of the baby cows. And actually, is yeah, that a picture? Yeah, this is of... the picture that Alicia took. So this is actually from the farm that Roslyn was rescued from. This is one of the babies that lived there. And you can see behind him the hutch that he is in. And you'll see the size of this when we go into the protest, just how small it is that they keep these babies in. And I heard Wayne talking about um, viruses that are in milk sometimes. And Rosalyn actually tested positive for bovine leukemia virus, what they call BLV, which is prevalent in at least 80% of dairy farms in America because they're packing so many animals in because they're trying to make so much profit that disease just runs rampant in these places. Yeah. And we're really excited to tell a story of Rosalyn and other dairy cows and show that milk is not just a harmless product, that this is a product that is harming babies and families. It's, it's harming millions and millions of these babies and again millions of them don't even get out of the farm alive. They never get to the point where they can produce milk or have their own babies because the, the conditions are so destitute and so filled with disease that they just collapse on the ground, starve to death or die of dehydration. 
and diarrhea and dehydration is one of the most common causes of death inside these dairy farms. Do so you have anything else to say to the live stream before we go? Yeah, but I just want to, I just want to mention the other things that Rosalind went through, which Wayne mentioned was dehydration. Rosalind was also dehydrated, and her lungs were also underdeveloped because she was taken away from her mother on day one, the first day she was born. And I'll tell you how we know that. It's because a woman's body, uh, humans and cows, give what's called colostrum in the first feeding for their babies. And we had Rosalind's blood tested, and she had what was called failure of passive transfer, which means she did not get the colostrum from her mother. So we know that on the day she was born, farmers tore her away from her mother. And that caused all kinds of problems because you need colostrum to develop a healthy immune system. And so her lungs weren't able to develop. She had to be placed on oxygen. If you've ever seen certain medical shows where you have a tube placed under someone's nose so that they can get pure oxygen, that had to happen to Rosalind. You can see in some of our videos when she's in the hospital. And she had to be hospitalized three times because she didn't have the care of a mother. Yeah, all I of just, these kind of problems. I'm just getting up really quickly. And again, we're going to show people the reality of this industry in just a minute. And um, I don't know if we can pull it off because we're actually, we have 100 people. You can see this massive crowd behind me. And I'm in the middle of the crowd. Julian and I and many others are actually going to be trying to bring in one of these crates into a Whole Foods. I've never heard of this happening before. We're going to bring a huge dairy crate right into a Whole Foods, put someone inside the crate, and we're going to place all of the milk in the Whole Foods with the real milk cartons, which is the pictures of the baby cows are taken. So we're going to replace the milk inside this grocery store with these milk cartons, which is showing the truth because Whole Foods is not willing to tell the people the truth. They're saying it's humane, it's free range, the animals are high welfare, and we want them to show the world the truth. And if they're not going to do it, we're going to do it. And we want your help in doing that. So again, share this live stream. We're getting really close. Um, in the past, Whole Foods has kicked us out. They've threatened us. They've assaulted us. They've banned me personally from this grocery store. Um, many other people have been banned for asking a simple question. Where do you get your dairy? Where do you get this so-called humane dairy? So we don't know what's going to happen. Um, we've got street marshals here to block off the streets as we march in. And we've got numbers. We've got so many people. So we think we're going to be able to get in, but who knows? You know. And, and when we start replacing the dairy with the truth about dairy, namely the stories of these baby cows torn from their moms, we don't know how the story's going to react. So I have no idea what's going to happen today, folks. This is a first for me. I've been an activist for 15 years, but this is going to be a first for me. So um, wish us luck. We're almost there. We're probably about a five-minute walk away. And again, we've got a big crowd with us. Everyone is prepared to take action. So are there any questions about this action before we start? Again, the plan is we're going to go in with a massive dairy crate. We're going to put, put the crate down right next to the milk. One of our activists, Amanda Rubrick, is going to crawl in and we're going to replace the dairy that's in the store with these dairy cartons, these real dairy cartons that show a missing child, a child who was taken from her mom. So all the customers and everyone on social media and in the mainstream media, because we did press release with this with the media, will see the truth about dairy. And our ask is very simple. We want Whole Foods to tell us where their barns are, where their farms are. And if they don't, we're going to live stream right from a dairy farm in the Northern California area, right into their store. So every single person who buys dairy is going to see the reality of the violence and suffering these poor baby cows endure. And we need your help in doing that. So thank you all very much for being here. Um, Thank you all for sharing the live stream. If you haven't shared it yet, just click the share button. It's a super easy way for you to support this. And there are going to be a lot of amazing speak outs. There's probably going to be uh, some, some altercations with, with the store employees because they're always violent at Whole Foods and really pushy. So we'll see what's going to happen. We're almost there. We're probably about three or four minutes away. So bear with us, folks. Um, some other things about the dairy industry that you may or may not know. The dairy industry is one of the most destructive to the environment. And most people think, oh, it's a dairy farm. You know, they're not killing the animals. They're not taking out any wildlife. But in fact, dairy creates a massive amount of greenhouse gases. And one of the reasons people are going vegan in droves around the world is because um, even if they're not concerned about animal ethics, they're concerned about the impact on the environment. And, and cows and the methane that cows produce comprise anywhere from 14 to up to 51% of all greenhouse gases. And this is killing off all the wildlife on this earth. And so DXE launched a campaign with Brother Wolf Animal Rescue just a few months ago called Save the Animal, Save the Earth, which is about how we need to create a vegan world, not just to protect animals in farms, the animals being tortured directly, but also protect all the animals going extinct in the wild because of climate change and habitat loss. If we don't stop this now, all the life on this earth will be gone. There's not going to be a planet for us to keep protecting if we don't stop this industry within the next few years. So this is an urgent matter of life on this earth surviving. And the only way we can allow it to survive, the only way we promote the survival of this earth 
and sustainability on this planet is for us to eradicate this destructive and violent and unsustainable industry. And dairy is at the top of the list because so many people think when they eat dairy they're doing something good. But that's not good. It's not sustainable. It's not ethical and it's got to stop. So some other things are going to happen today. There will be people on megaphones giving chance. We've got a ton of videographers. Um, I'm, sure, I'm surprised Susanna doesn't have her drum. You don't have your drum today, huh, Susanna? No. You're somebody not going to be drumming? took it away from me. Somebody took it away from you? So maybe well, next time Susanna will have a drum. We're going to bring the, the information that people need to know yeah. about what is really happening inside the slaughterhouses. Absolutely. And everywhere, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So we have... Somebody can take my drum. No absolutely. So we got... And we got... We've got leaflets. We've got leaf litters who are planning to distribute all this information to every single person in the Whole Foods. As they're marching back and forth from the Whole Foods, there are going to be people handing out leaflets so all the people on the streets are seeing us as well. And this is such an effective form of activism to get masses of people because one of the crucial things is when you're a lonely vegan, you're not nearly as effective as when you come out in force, exactly, right? Absolutely. When you're with a ton of other people. And Susanna yeah. is one of these people who, you know, you got involved, what, about a year ago now? Seven months. Seven months ago? Yes. Okay. And, and absolutely and, there is no stopping. So I invite every single one of the vegans that feel that you guys are alone. You guys are not alone. Come to us, yeah. come to Berkeley, and we're going to make sure that you go outside and get more power to speak up for the animals, for absolutely. what is right. So yeah, please because come to Berkeley, meet us in person, reach us on Facebook, reach us on Instagram, yeah. and we can be the change that these animals need. Absolutely. Not only the animals, but the whole planet. So please. How well stated is that? How well stated was that? Wasn't that amazing, everyone? It Suzanne is has given you a great pitch for <laughs> activism and for making change on this earth. And we need more people with the eloquence of Susanna and the strength. Susanna is one of the loudest, one of the strongest activists we have. And I'm actually shocked that you've only been around for seven months. I feel like Charlie. you've been around for years. Yeah. Well, you we know. got some other folks in the live stream behind us. Yeah, like and that's right. Our message today is peace, right? Peace that's all it's all about. It's nonviolent direct action. And when you take nonviolent direct action, you get the issue on the table. Because the industry wants the public and the people to be ignorant. They want the public to be passive. They want the public not to speak out and we need to challenge the industry by speaking our truth and if we do speak our truth more and more people will be won over to the cause because the reality is who in god's name can defend baby baby cows being eaten alive by maggots folks this happens routinely on dairy farms this happened at a dairy farm that i physically was at this happened at a dairy farm where roslyn was going to be eaten alive by maggots as she died of pneumonia but we saved her with your support and we need to save all these animals. But even more, we need to challenge the lies the industry tells to convince people to buy these products. Because 75% of Americans, 3 out of 4 Americans in this country believe that the milk, the eggs, the meat that they buy comes from a humane farm, a so-called humane farm. And the companies that are marketing these products as humane are unwilling to give any sort of transparency. So we've gone to Whole Foods on multiple occasions and told them, hey, let us know where these so-called humane dairy farms are, and they've never responded to us. And if the corporations that are destroying this earth are not willing to respond to the people, then the people need to take direct action. And that is what we're doing today. Am I right? Yeah. It's Ben, right? I haven't yeah. seen you in a while. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Nice to see so you. So we got Ben right here. Ben, what, what do you think? Are you feeling nervous? Uh, no, I'm feeling good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're a veteran. You've been to many of these actions, so no, you're I'm probably... No, actually, this is my first actual action. But really? I've been, yeah, I've been hanging out with DXE for a while. I, I did not know that. I would have figured this is like a 30th action, because yeah. I feel like I've known you for years. Yeah, you have. Okay, cool. Well, what are you thinking, Dan? This is your first action. Are you are you worried? No, um, I, I think we're going to take this huge crate in there. Yeah, I think it's um, a cause that everybody can get behind transparency. It's Absolutely. It's a really easy one. Yeah. Um, even if people think that we should eat dairy, then... We should at least know. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think about us live streaming footage from a dairy farm? Have That's you heard awesome. of this before? Yeah. No, I, I heard it's going on today. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we got um, Priya and Alexandra Paul, the famous Baywatch actress, are actually in a dairy farm right now. And they're going to be live streaming footage onto a big screen TV that will be broadcasting into the Whole Foods. Well, we're going to have a big ass TV, a big ass calf crate, and 100 plus people speaking out for the animals today. That's cool. I remember I had one friend who uh, yeah, I was talking to her about dairy and she's like, wow, is that really what happens? Yeah. And she's like, if that's really what happens, I'll give up dairy. Yeah, that's so awesome. Of, so let's make sure people know. Yeah. Yeah. And again, folks, we, we've got a big crowd behind me. There's a ton of people uh, behind me, but we're almost there. We're actually, yeah, we're just a block away, folks. So we might have to quiet down a little bit. So uh, bear with us, folks. we got to quiet down and not make too much noise because if they close the doors, we're not going to be able to get in. So, oh, okay. The marshals are telling us to scrunch up. 
So I don't know if we can pull this off, folks, because I've never had an action like this before in my history where we're trying to carry a big crate and we've got all these cartons of milk that we're going to be, or cartons of, of, of real milk, which is the violence and suffering behind the milk. Rachel, do you want to show us the carton real quick? Can I show people the carton? So again, Rachel's got one of these cartons too. Everyone's got a little carton that says missing on it and it's got a baby cow on it. And we're going to replace the cartons of milk inside the Whole Foods with these real cartons. And how do you feel about that, Rachel? Um, I think it's going to be really great. I was vegetarian for 14 years of my life. Yeah. And I would have gone vegan if I had known about the truth yeah. about dairy. So. That they're taking babies from their moms. That the babies are dying of horrible diseases. They're never treated. Um, and obviously yeah. they die at the end of their lives in miserable and horrible ways in slaughterhouses. Yeah. Very short lives. Yeah. So thank you very much for sharing that, that with us, Rachel. And those of you who don't know Rachel, Rachel does amazing animal care work. She has a little micro sanctuary in her home. So she saved, what is it, seven lives now? Seven hens. Seven hens in her own home. So, you know, you can take direct action in so many different ways. You can come out with us on the streets. You can share these videos on social media. Is everyone sharing this right now? Please share this right now if you haven't. Share this on social media. You can also care for the animals directly by taking them into your own homes. And Rachel is one of the heroes of the movement who's taken seven survivors of the industry into her own home. So thank you very much, Rachel. Okay, I actually need to, I think we need to quiet down a little bit, folks, because we're, uh, I'm going to show you guys right now. We're right around the corner from Whole Foods. Whole Foods. So I'm going to turn this around real quick so you guys can see. The Whole Foods is right there, folks. And we got, we've got a big crowd of people about to walk in. And I don't know if we're going to be able to make it in. But you can see right there, there is the Whole Foods. We're, we've got the big crate. We've got a guy with a drum. We've got all our little uh, real dairy crates. We're going to walk through. I'm going to try and get to the front, folks. So let's see if we can pull this off. All right, folks, we're about to walk in. We're about to get in there. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try our best. And again, you can see there's a big crowd behind us. We've got a big crowd of people about to bring a big ass dairy crate right into a Whole Foods. And here it is, folks. I don't see any police officers, so it looks like we are gonna get in. All right. My heart's beating, this is gonna be really intense. I don't know if they're gonna allow us to do this, but we have to bring in the truth. So we're gonna bring in that dairy crate and we're gonna bring in a TV that'll live stream exactly what's happening in an actual dairy farm into the Whole Foods and we'll have dozens and dozens of cartons of real milk which is the suffering of animals not the fake milk not the free-range nonsense they talk about but the real stuff um, here we go guys we're going in so they're saying that we can't come in we so sir we just had a request uh, if you guys want to protest online. outside, yeah, I'm no, more understand. than happy to support but that. We've, we've asked Whole Foods many times to show us where their dairy farms are because they say free range okay. and humane. I'm asking, you've but, actually asked, yeah. also been asked not to be in the store. This store? Yes. I don't actually recall that. but I do. You know, we'd be happy to do that if you stopped illegally lying to your customers. Because unfortunately, that is consumer fraud. Great. I'll you let know, you talk said. to the police when they get here. Yeah, okay. I'm not a police liaison, but thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your willingness to talk, and we'd love to chat with you afterwards. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, we're going in, folks. We're going in. Here it is. You have a sign. You're going to go to the dairy aisle. And folks, we are. The dairy crate is now coming in. This is a real life size dairy crate with someone inside. We're going in with a dairy crate, folks. We're going in with a real life size dairy crate. I have never seen anything like this happening before, and it's happening today. Um, and again, this is this is what happens. Every year, nine billion dairy cows are having babies every year. So they generally kill the little cows. They sell them for babies. Folks, this is a real life-size dairy crate. This is how every dairy cow lives her entire life. And we have someone inside this dairy crate right now. She's inside. It's not going to fit. You hate the stuff. It's a terrible, strong ammonia smell. The Right here, you got the free right here. This is the opposite of the like you know. There's not a blade of grass live streaming anywhere. Folks, we are live streaming from a real dairy farm. This is a real dairy farm. You might think, oh, well, the cows have places to run around, but there's no grass to eat. It's really noisy. It smells terrible. Again, we are inside of a Whole Foods with a real life-size you know, dairy crate. Udder, and we've got no, hundreds of people yeah. crowding around, showing the public the truth of what happens in dairy farms. 
and you can see the lines here as well. These are and Holsteins. We got the jerseys are the brown ones and the Holsteins are the black ones. They give the most milk to uh, these two breeds. They're the most popular breeds in the Manny, do you have anything to show? Yeah. Yeah, and it's so important for the public and people shopping Whole Foods to know this because they're the ones who are buying these products because they think they're they're doing something humane and good for animals. So again, I'm going to show you guys. This is a real life size there. We just stepped in five inches. Yeah, so we just said shit. So we just stepped in a lot of. Life size dairy crate. Virginia is about this to give a speak out. This is the scale of this dairy, and believe it or not, even though you see a lot of cows, there's definitely there are definitely um, bigger farms. abusive facilities, especially since they're saying these animals are treated well. There is a huge line of people here making a simple ask. Excuse me everyone. Just in case we touch them. Excuse me everyone. My name is Virginia. I'm a whole food customer and I want to tell you why we should choose plant-based alternatives to dairy products. I love this store, and I believe everyone here is a compassionate person. So I think you all have the right to know what I discovered when I went to a dairy farm to see where cow's milk comes from. I want to tell you about three myths of the dairy industry. The first myth is that dairy cows are happy. For most of my life, I thought that eating cheese was harmless and that it had nothing to do with killing animals. All the dairy packages here in this store show cows and their babies in happy pastures. I saw a dairy farm with my own eyes and I can tell you that is a complete lie. Cows produce milk for the same reason that we do, to nourish their babies. The dairy industry takes cows away from their mother hours after birth and steal all of their milk to sell it to us. They forcibly impregnate cows over and over until they get so worn out that they're killed because they're considered useless. As a woman, I'm disgusted by this barbaric practice of taking advantage of females' bodies. The second myth of the dairy industry is that we need cow's milk to be healthy. They spend over a billion dollars each year to convince us that we need cow's milk for calcium and nourishment. But the truth is that cow's milk is not the best source of these nutrients. In fact, we can get them from plant-based alternatives that are much more healthy for us. The third myth is that producing dairy is, sus is sustainable. The reality is that raising cows is destroying our planet through methane emission and is an extremely inefficient use of water and farmable land. Let me tell you what I saw when I went to a dairy farm. Row after row of baby cows, each in individual boxes, too small to walk around, crying for their mothers, exposed to extreme temperatures, and laying on hardwood, on their own feces. One calf in particular caught my attention. She was smaller than the others. 
covered in diarrhea and close to death. When I reached out to her, she immediately tried to escape her prison, and she started licking my arms, begging for help. We could not ignore her cries, so we took her to the vet, who confirmed that she was dying from pneumonia and maggots. Rosalind is now safe at a sanctuary where she can, where she has acres to roam and many friends to play with. We were only able to rescue one cat that day, but each of us has the power to save these animals, starting by simply making the right consumer choices. The good news is that removing dairy products from our diet is easier than ever. Whole Foods has many delicious plant-based milks, yogurts, cheeses, and even ice cream. So if you are against cruelty, as I know you are, we urge you to join us in this movement and replace the products in your cart with plant-based alternatives. Folks, Virginia just gave a rousing speak out right outside of a dairy crate inside of a whole thing. I have been to places where hundreds of mothers are forcibly impregnated and where their newborn children are taken away from them, where their cries are ignored and where the date of their death has already been determined. We call these places dairy farms. And we are taught since we are children that these are beautiful places where humans and cows coexist and mutually help each other. But the reality is haunting. I have nightmares about the mothers and the baby cows that we met on dairy farms and that we had to leave behind, knowing that now they are dead and we couldn't save them. But today, I am here for them. Today, I am here to denounce the industry that is responsible for their pain and suffering. Do not be fooled. Dairy products are based on animal suffering and public deception. When we see milk, cheese, and yogurt at the store, we are not shown the tormented mothers. We are not shown their bloody udders or the piles of dead calves, we are shown false imagery of imaginary happy cows in imaginary green pastures. And although these companies are so proud of the products that they sell, and so eager to convince us that the cows are happy, that they're humanely exploited, nobody seems to know what these farms even are. We have called company after company. We have gone to stores, headquarters, offices. We've called and talked to every single person we were told to contact. And every single person down the supply chain tells us the same exact thing, that they apparently don't know where these farms are. And that's absurd. If the dairy industry is so proud of what they're doing, they should let us see the farms and let us see the cows for ourselves. And we are not interested in their propaganda or their advertising or their photo stock images of happy cows. What we are interested in is the truth and injustice. And we have the right to know.
going to show you guys the milk that we just replaced. And people are placing milk cartons down next to the milk crate, the dairy crate. These are the conditions the dairy cows are actually raising. And we have um, 100 plus activists just laying down these milk cartons from a Whole Foods next to the crate. And again, these are the crates in which baby animals are tortured and killed. For everybody that we left behind. So the Whole Foods did say they called the police, but they haven't been kicked out yet. And we still have this huge dairy crate inside. Amanda's sitting inside. suffer for someone's preference. I am so sorry. Please forgive us for stealing your sustenance. May we learn better. You deserve more. I'm so sorry you got taken from your mother. Your mother will never see her daughter. Doing what we can so no more mothers are repeatedly raped so they can so people can drink this. 
Cows deserve to be safe, happy, and free, just like us. I'm sorry you were taken from your mother. Again, folks, we have dozens of bottles of milk right next to a real life-size dairy crate to show people what actually happens to cows in the dairy industry. Um, you know, Amanda honestly probably has much better conditions. She's at least not sitting on feces. She's not sitting on a slatted floor. She's actually in better shape than most dairy cows. And we could just see, you know, how dreadful this is to actually live your entire life in something like this. So we got Amanda sitting inside of the dairy crate. We got all these cartons of milk right here. And all of our actors have now gone outside. Over here. Rachel. And if you look at some of the marking on here, it says organic, it says humane, it says free range. It makes it look like this is such a wonderful thing. You see these green pastures on the dairy cartons. You see a cow on the outside. They even get a it makes it look like you're helping an animal here, right? You've got this picture of this beautiful baby cow. What they're not telling you on this picture of this beautiful baby cow is those beautiful baby cows are raised in crates like this, where they're stolen from their mothers. They never get a chance to step outside. They live on hard floor. They get horrible diseases and die at the rate of millions. These horrible practices are happening because people are being deceived. And today, we did a live stream inside of Whole Foods. We're still inside of Whole Foods right now. And this store has almost been shut down by all the people who are just staring and watching what is happening. Because more and more people are seeing the truth of what's happening in these horrible farms. And as people see the truth, as they see that dairy is not a product, it is sustenance that's being stolen from a baby. It is not a commodity. It is the lifeblood of a mother who's stolen from uh, her family and a baby who's stolen from her mother. And as more people see this and understand this, more people will join the animal rights movement. We have the right to know that this is not the truth. These beautiful pastures. Wait, yes. There, um, there's a guy out there that has a diesel hat on. It's probably some diesel that might want to. Very interesting. Cool. Yeah. So um, we're putting the dairy back right now. Amanda's still in the crate. Uh, the employees have been extremely aggressive towards us, threatening to, to imprison us, to call the police. But we're here to show the truth. And you know, when we've asked so many times for the company to answer a simple question, we've just been asking them, show us your farms. If you say your dairy is humane, tell us where you're getting this dairy. Why can't you answer this question? And if they can't answer this question, we are going to take direct action and continue showing the world the truth until we get the answer that their consumers and that the citizens of this country deserve. We deserve the right to know what is actually happening. And we've talked to management on dozens and dozens of occasions. They're not responding to any of our inquiries. And so we've resorted to using direct action tactics to get the answer that the customers, the citizens, and frankly, the animals, most importantly, deserve. Amanda, how do you feel? How does it feel being inside that crate? It feels awful. I've been on those farms, and I know I've seen the cows in these crates, and I know that they're suffering right in this very moment. And I just really sad for every single cow that is out there, every baby, every mother that lost their baby. And you've been sitting there for probably about 20 minutes on your knees. How are you feeling? It's probably already causing a little pain, huh? Yeah, my ankles hurt, my knees hurt, but it's nothing compared to a lifetime of sitting in here. Just yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, these poor baby cows have to sit there, and they're, they've just been born. Their immune systems aren't strong. Their knees, their joints, their skin is not very robust, and they have to immediately sit on slider floors, on hardwood floors. And the companies lie. You know, the farms, they say they give them bedding, and, and you've seen the inside of a dairy farm. Did you see any bedding? No bedding. It's yeah. sat there. They're covered in feces, no, nothing to lay on, just the cold air against their skin, and all alone here, and all their brothers and sisters cry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Amanda. So, again, I'm going to show people what this crate looks like. We've got this dairy crate inside of Whole Foods. There are over 100 people outside speaking out. We're probably gonna go outside in just a moment and show you guys what's happening outside. But this is an incredibly powerful action. And one thing all of you can do is share this video, share this live stream, because when this live stream is done, many millions more Americans will be able to see the truth about the dairy industry if you share. So if you could all just hit that share button right now. It's right underneath your live stream. It makes a big difference in getting the word out. So more people can see dairy crates like this, can see that this is how these poor babies have to live their entire lives. Would you want to live in a crate like this your entire life? 
Yet this is what's happening at Whole Foods. They might not be showing it to you, but this is the truth about what's happened to the dairy industry. So hitting that share button will allow more and more people to see this truth and, and have some empathy for the animals who are suffering so horribly, who's, who are being taken from their families for this horrific industry. So please hit that share button. All right, we're gonna go outside in just a moment. Put me on your socials. Yeah, you're not on my social media. Don't worry. All right, so I'm gonna go outside and show you guys what's going on outside, folks. So we're marching through Berkeley now. We're leaving the Whole Foods. We've got a big crowd of people here. I'll show you guys. We got a drummer. Lori's got the drum. How do you feel, Lori? Great. Good yeah. day. Yeah. What'd you think? That was pretty powerful, huh? Yeah. That was good. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that before in my almost That's 20 years in MRSX. Yeah. Well, great. you know, when you yeah. got 100 people, there's not a lot they can do. Yeah, yeah. So, is anybody at the store who's willing to talk to us? Anybody? Would that be possible? So, we just have a simple question. We want to know where the dairy is actually coming from, because Whole Foods says they believe in transparency. And we've done investigations showing animals being eaten alive by maggots. So they're not willing to talk to us, unfortunately. So, and we've done this so many times, and they're still not willing to talk to us. Sir, are you willing to talk to us? OK. Do you, last time you gave us just a customer service number, and we did call that number, and no one is giving us any answers. Can you give it a call back. OK. So just keep calling? Yeah, probably should. I mean, we, we don't want to have to do this, honestly, but we have to take direct action okay. when the company is not responding to well, any guys, of our inquiries. Well, you guys so can what, you think? You guys, you guys do what you need to do. I'm running my store. Yeah, I totally understand. Yeah. Is there anything else you can think of that we might try to do? No, not today. No? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So the manager was fairly respectful, but they're still not giving us an answer to our questions. So, you know, I'm going to keep joining the rest of the protesters today. Thank you all very much. And you should read about yourselves if you don't know about the horrific cruelty to these animals that is happening at Whole Foods Farm. The multiple investigations finding cannibalism, animals being eaten by maggots, animals sick and dying of dehydration and starvation on the floor. We go to Whole Foods, they don't say anything. And, and unfortunately, in all the farm counties of this nation, the farmers control the political system, so we can't get any law enforcement to take action. Because this is a violation of California Penal Code Section 597. Read about human rights, read about white privilege, read about the real problem that's going around our country. Yeah. Do all that for the human beings first, sure. yeah. then move forward. Travel, buddy. Sure. Travel around the world and see the real struggle. Yeah, I'm actually from China. I've traveled not, across the it world. Is not, it is not eggs, it is not milk. That's yeah. just the end of it. Well, I think we are. I think you're speaking from privilege are, as well. No. Though, because those bro, animals really? are suffering. Okay, yeah. great. Have you been inside of a Factory farm. Have a great day. Have you been in a concentration camp? You don't want to camp? engage in my conversation. I, I actually. Yours. All right. Yeah. No. I'm, no. I'll, I'm happy to answer your question, sir. I'm, I apologize. You want to continue, sir? Yeah. So my parents, my parents and grandparents actually lived in poverty in China, and my my a lot of my family got exterminated in concentration camps. You want to hear my story, sir? No. Okay. You don't want to hear my story, sir? Okay. He didn't want to hear my story, which is his right, obviously. But this is one of the things that people always say. They say, oh, read about human rights, read about human privilege. But the reality is human rights and animal rights are connected. That if we believe in fighting against human cruelty, we should believe in fighting against animal cruelty because all life is precious on this earth and all beings that suffer need to be protected from suffering. So whether it's a human or non-human animal, whether it's a calf being eaten alive and by maggots at a dairy farm or a Chinese citizen whose rights are being oppressed by dictatorship in China. I have fought for the rights of human beings and animals, and I will continue doing so. And we need big corporations to stop doing these things that are hurting human beings and animals. Because Whole Foods, frankly, has been a union-busting company that has denied climate change, has killed, they beat up a black man at an Oakland store just a few months ago and denied any sort of responsibility for it. So this big corporation, people don't realize that behind this green sign is a huge amount of cruelty and violence, and I need to catch up. But thank you very much, ma'am. What's your name? Is it okay if I broadcast you a little bit? Sure. Okay. Do you want to share your experience just seeing this demonstration? I just admire you guys because I feel for the animals. Yeah. And that's the reason I'm not eating meat. Great. Thank you so much. Because of the way we're treating the animals. We think we have a right to hurt animals yeah. because they can't talk like us. I know. And it's not right. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And I've been an investigator for 15 years. I started out doing dog and cat cruelty cases, but I moved on to factory farming cruelty cases. And you're right. You, you hit the nail on the butt that on the, on the head that because these animals don't have the ability to advocate for themselves, they're terrible things that happen to them. And no one knows unless we agitate. That's right. So thank you very much for your agitation thank today you. and your support. Thank what is your name, ma'am? Lisa. Lisa. Thank you very yeah. much, Lisa. And, and we'll, We'll see you next time. Okay. Right. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, I'm going to try and catch up to them. But again, you got the Whole Foods employees there. I'm actually going to try and talk. 
I won't, I won't broadcast you. I just wanted to apologize for interrupting you. No, I don't, okay. I don't want to. I'm not broadcasting. Fuck okay. you. I don't, I don't trust you. I, I'm, I'm shooting this way. You can see the camera. Wayne. I'm shooting the other direction. Wayne, I don't trust you. Okay. okay. But I wanted to apologize for interrupting you. And I do believe in human rights. I've been doing anti-racist work for 20 years. I've worked against capital punishment. I was one of the actors who ended the death penalty in Illinois to stop people of color from being killed mercilessly by the Illinois government. And all these issues are connected. That's all I want to say. Okay? All these issues are absolutely connected. But if we believe in human rights, we have okay. to believe in animal rights too. Thank you very much, and I apologize. Thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to? Did you want to share anything? No. Okay. I, I'm genuinely sorry for interrupting you. If I, if, Okay. okay, well, I mean, if he doesn't want to talk to me, that's okay. Uh, I just talked to a couple of the employees. I said I wouldn't broadcast them, so I didn't. But, you know, they're complaining about why are you addressing animal rights when humans are being abused and violated. And I told them it's all connected. That because we care about animal suffering, we should care about human suffering. Because we care about human suffering, we should care about animal suffering. So all these issues are connected. And the basic idea behind the animal rights movement is quite simple. That any time a power is being abused, it needs to be challenged. When someone is being forced into a concentration camp, when someone is being forced into a crate where they have to live their entire life, when families are being separated, when mothers are being torn from their children and the children are mercilessly exploited for their own flesh, then something's gotta change. We're gonna cross quickly. You wanna come down? All right, Daniela? Uh, I don't even know. We're gonna try and catch up everybody. We're a little bit behind, but that was a pretty intense experience. Does anybody have any comments or questions? As we try and catch up, I'm gonna try and run. Is that okay, Daniela? Yes. We're gonna try and run together and catch up to everyone else because we are behind the rest of the march. We got caught up behind. But I wanna thank all of you for joining this. We're gonna uh, follow the march along and see if we can catch up with all the other protesters because we did have 100 plus people. Um, oh, actually we got right here. Some of the people are at the demonstration. Amanda, you were just inside that crate. Right. Do you wanna share your experience? Sure. You packed it all away? Yeah. Let me just show people, let's, why don't we stand you, let's have you stand next to the hut so everyone can see. So Amanda was the brave activist who stood it inside the hutch. You can see the hutch behind us that we constructed. And tell us about your experience. Um, it was it felt very isolating. Yeah. Um, first off, like you were just you know you're in there and you're looking all around observing. I can't imagine what it would be like having yeah live there constantly and see all your brothers and sisters against through these crates, not being able to interact or snuggle or you know share a moment of love. Um, yeah. You know, so cold, no bedding, um, no no comfort at all. The cold air all around you at night, um, in all conditions, rain, possibly snow, any anything, and it's totally cold yeah because they're treated like things it's, it's like you left a chair outside your house and you don't care in fact we're, they're treated worse than chairs because if there's a chair outside you, and it started raining you'd probably take the chair inside and so they're they're treated in many ways worse than garbage and this crate behind us is the crate that you actually helped build this right or did you help build this no oh this is just out okay so Amanda just sat it Amanda is a very skillful person so I thought I mean I'm sure you could build one if you wanted to you and Trevor have a lot of have a lot of uh, carpentry skills but this was Alex building this crate but we built this life-size real veal crate dairy crate and brought it inside the Whole Foods today. Amanda was the one who sat inside. So thank you very much for sitting inside that. That wasn't easy, but it was a very powerful message. And we're going to catch up to the approaches now. And I'll probably yeah. see you there too, huh? See you there. Are you walking there? Are you? Yeah. Okay. So let's walk together. I'm going to try and run, actually, so we can catch up to everybody else. So let's go together, folks. So if anyone has any questions, let me know. Um, but I am going to try and catch up to all of our other activists so you can see where they all went. It's going to take a while because... I did spend quite a bit of time talking to some of the employees at Whole Foods. But I'm in pretty good shape because I work out every day, so hopefully I can catch up and not lose my breath too much. Let me actually stop and see. As I'm walking over, does anyone have any questions? Let's see if anyone has any questions. Yeah, Suzanne is talking about all the different diseases caused by consumption of animal products. And those of you who don't know, dairy is one of the primary vectors of foodborne illnesses. So people get sick from eating dairy, possibly more than any other animal product. And a huge portion of the population of Earth, the human population of Earth, is actually allergic to dairy. So my community, for example, 95 plus percent of Asian people cannot digest dairy because we're lactose intolerant. And yet we're fed this in our school system, in the food pyramid. It's subsidized massively by the government to the tune of billions of dollars. And this is literally poison, poison that we're eating.
So Sierra Dawson is saying it's really disappointing. There are a few people who are more concerned about the milk on the floor than the truth they're sharing. Florentina is saying that shopping in Whole Foods now is the same as going to Walmart. It's so true. Nicholas is asking for protesting Amazon. It's a great idea, Nicholas. Sarika is saying fabulous action. Thank you, Sarika. I know you've been a big supporter of ours. And I'm just seeing if there are any questions. So animal eating societies are the reason we have world hunger? Absolutely, Curtis. You're absolutely right about that. Let's see who else we have. And I'm seeing a lot of trolls. There are a lot of people here who seem to be trolls from the industry, who seem to be you know, mocking or making fun of animal rights activists. And the question I have for you is, in the 1960s, would you have stood for civil rights? In the 1970s and 80s, would you have stood for gay rights? In the 1990s, would you have stood for environmental rights and the right of our planet to survive? And in every social movement in history, people have had to speak out and be willing to be dissenters because we can't just let things stand as they are when we're hurtling towards an apocalypse. And that might not sound dramatic, but when you see the numbers, Hundreds of thousands of species going extinct. Trillions of individual animals suffering and dying due to horrific cruelty in factory farms, due to habitat loss and climate change. You realize that this is not a hobby. This is not something we can do on the weekends alone. This is a cataclysm for the entire planet and all life on this planet. And we need to fight for this cause as if it is a cataclysm because it's already there. For the animals of this earth, climate change is already destroying the earth. And this campaign we launched a few months ago with Brother Wolf, Save the Animals, Save the Earth, is outlining the urgency of this cause today and the power all of you have to make a difference because every single person in a social movement is growing the movement and making the movement more powerful. So all of you can make a huge difference by sharing live streams like this, supporting efforts like this on social media, and by getting on the streets yourselves. And Direct Action Everywhere is a grassroots network that has had participation in 150 cities around the world. And we want you to be a part of that network. So please join us if you can. Shaloe is asking, could please do anything to you after a protest is over? In theory, they can. So if there's evidence of any sort of so-called criminal activity, they could try to bring a case. And if the corporation were to complain and file a complaint, these corporations have a huge amount of power, even in cities like Berkeley. These are multi-billion dollar corporations. So they can try to bring legal action against us. But the best shield for us, the best defense for all of us, is having a huge base, a massive mobilized base of activists who are willing to speak out and fight if they do try to throw us in jail. So thank you for that question, Shlo. Let's see, what other questions do we have? Um, people are talking about how wonderful the delicious vegan options are. Jennifer Carnady, thank you for saying that dairy is barbaric. Barbaric. We have so many wonderful things to eat nowadays. Haley Mead is saying the number one cause of deforestation is animal agriculture. And that's absolutely right, Haley. Thank you for sharing that. It's a very important fact. And Renee is saying if trolls are present, it means they're threatened and you're absolutely right. And you know, effective movements do trigger a backlash. And I've actually written about this. It's called the backlash effect. And we can't be worried about trolls attacking us, about people complaining to the police, complaining to the government. I have no problem with going to jail because I understand that for this social movement to succeed, people have to be willing to bear some sacrifice. After all, the animals are held in captivity every single day of their lives. Lori, thank you for saying that these actions are powerful. We can only do these actions with supporters like you. So you're helping us make this happen. And honestly, there's so many comments David is asking, how do you make a good cream sauce that is dairy free? And you can make cream sauces out of almonds, nuts. Um, you can use coconut milk to make cream. So there's so many wonderful dairy alternatives. And, and one of the great things about the world as it is today is that things are changing. That more and more people are inventing wonderful plant-based alternatives. They're more sustainable, they're healthier for human health, and they're kind to the animals. And so you can do it so easily, even at Walmart and Safeway, and especially at Whole Foods. And you know, while we obviously don't like the humane washing that Whole Foods does, a lot of people do shop at Whole Foods. And our campaign against Whole Foods is not a boycott campaign. We're asking people to challenge their humane lives, not to stop buying their vegan products. What other questions do we have? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going through. Rebecca, thank you very much for your support. James is saying I've had death threats, and absolutely there are plenty of death threats that happened to animal rights activists. I've been threatened 
by death threats over the past couple of weeks pretty much constantly because a bunch of farmers have been trolling my page and saying they're gonna shoot me in my ass they're gonna blow my face open and you know I'm happy to take that hit because if people are so threatened it must mean that we've we've hit a raw point that something about our advocacy is triggering a reaction and sometimes that's what you need to do and uh, I'm gonna change the camera a little bit you can see the act up ahead of me there's a bunch of actors up ahead of me I'm gonna try and catch up to them Right now, let's hope I don't get run over. But you can see there, Ed, there are our people in a big line. And obviously we got all of you hundreds of people online as well. So um, we all made a big difference today and we'll probably just join the debrief so you can all join us as we debrief and just process what happened. And every time we do a de demonstration, we don't just do the demonstration and go home. We go to a local park, we go to somewhere where all the activists can get together, and we do what's called a debrief. And the reason we debrief is because protests are really intense emotional experiences. And we want everyone to get a chance to share how they're feeling after the protest is over. And, um, and anybody who needs any support can get that support. We often get food together, so it's a great time. So we really encourage you, if you're doing demonstrations, to do the same. Don't just do the demo. Get people out together afterwards to build community, because community is the lifeblood of a social movement. So again, I've almost caught up to everybody. You can see how big our numbers were. There's a big, long line of people. We got Rachel of all the dairy cartons that we left in the store here. Here are the dairy cartons that we have placed in the store. It looks like we covered most of them. Rachel, did they steal any of our dairy cartons? Uh, they didn't throw any away? I don't think so. How'd you get them? So, have we got these? Yeah. Yeah. Because so, I saw they took them away. Where did they take them? Oh, so we, we put them on the shelves, and then uh, Alex and I went and we took them off the shelves and just put them in there. Oh, really? I didn't see them on the shelves. I thought the store took them down, no? No, no, we took them off. They were on the shelves. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Wilson okay. will be very upset if they took any of them. Yeah. Because the idea was that we, we would get them all back. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that was my job today, was to make sure like that we there. got them. Because we're going to use this for an art display. So many of you have probably seen like the missing children displays, where you, know, you put pictures of children who are missing in grocery stores and bulletin boards all across the community. Well, there are many missing children who are victims of the animal agriculture industry, and the dairy industry is one of the worst offenders. And today, we put out tons of these cartons of missing children, showing people these poor babies are suffering immensely. And again, we were only able to do that with your support. So thank you all very much for joining us and making that happen. But Rachel, Andrew, do you have any other thoughts you want to share? I talked to one woman who uh, claimed to have been vegan for 40 years. Wow. And she was in tears looking at us. She, wow. she was saying to me, it's finally going to happen. Like, this is, this this is, is it. it. So, this is it. Yeah, all the people who are here, like, I think when you have those numbers, it's just people realize, like, this yeah. is a real movement. It's like, up. Yeah, when you have 150 people in a store, it's just, yeah, it's, it's changing people's minds. And Andrew's been one of our leaders in that movement. He's the leader of our animal care team. Exactly. He's been on multiple investigations. We're so grateful to you for taking that risk for the animals, Andrew. Yeah, of I course. Mean, it was, it's got to be really powerful. You go back and forth between an animal abusing facility and then going to the retail store where they're selling the products because it's such a disconnect, right? Absolutely. No, that's what I was telling everybody is I'm telling them, look where your milk's coming from. Ask, inquire. Yeah. Somebody was telling me, oh, I don't buy milk at Whole Foods. I buy it at Costco. Well, Costco is not any better. You got to ask Costco also. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. No, it's people. People are disconnected, but we're we're starting to make them think about it. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Put this real quick again. And and people did think. I talked to a couple customers who were extremely supportive. Even frankly, the employees themselves were a little embarrassed that the company could not answer a simple question: "Where is your milk coming from?" I mean, it seems like such a simple question, and the company claims they care about transparency. If they actually do care about transparency, they would answer that very simple question, where is the milk coming from? But they were not able to answer that question today. We're going to keep bringing hundreds of people out to big demonstrations like this. You can see everybody behind me. There's a big crowd behind me. And we're going to keep doing this until the company agrees to answer that simple question and give citizens of this country the right to know.
the people in the back had a little hard time uh, hearing the chanting, but um, I just wanted to say that the people that were doing the audio did such an amazing job. They were carrying the speakers and carrying the TV, and they were all connected together, and um, they did a really amazing job of doing that. So they had a car that they had transported all the heavy equipment over in, so we had them break off and go back in that vehicle. So apologize about not being able to hear, but. I think that we still have the TV in there showing the live stream of a dairy farm and um, we did a really great job of speaking up for the cows in there. Does anybody want to share an experience that they had or? Especially the new people. Yes. Uh, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I know. Uh, did you feel empowered? Any new folks feel empowered from the action? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Nice. Woo! It just brought, they were present with us. So thank you for arranging that. Whoever's out there doing that, thank you. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Priya, Amira, Lewis, and Alexander Paul came all the way up from LA. So thanks to them for coming. Thank you. Yeah, um, by the time we all like went outside, started chanting, um, this one lady uh, with her grocery cart and whatnot, like, was just watching, and um, Matt actually stopped and talked to her, and she was just like, this is so profound, and just started crying, and Matt gave her a hug, and I thought that was amazing. <laughs> wow. Also, I, uh, oh wait, let's get this guy, yeah, yeah. Um, I, this is my second one of these protests. <laughs> Wanted to say, say this is amazing, and I love doing this. These are kind of some th things, and it's just like, yeah. I'm <laughs> wordless because of this. Oh. <laughs> <He's wordless. laughs> oh, um, <laughs> after we had exited. Um, a lady and uh, a, an elderly lady and her husband were walking into Whole Foods and she was giving me a thumbs up as she was walking in and I followed her in and I interviewed her and she just was like, this is about animal rights, right? And I'm like, yep. And she's like, good, I don't eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> I've been vegan for a while, but I have no vegan friends at all. Like, all my family, everybody eats meat. And it's good to know that this is happening. Like, I'm from Brazil, and it's crazy to say that you don't eat meat in there. Like, they, they're like, what's wrong with you? So it's amazing to know that this is happening in the world. Like, I, I, I hope it keeps getting bigger. say I've been to a lot of protests at Whole Foods and especially when we go line up outside I feel like a lot of times there's like one line of people or two line of pe lines of people and it maybe goes door to door like this time we had I think three or four lines of people stacked up and we we're spilling past the doors and like the police never showed up uh, but like just we're growing and they know that there's nothing they can do to stop us and so I thought that was really amazing. <laughs> with the name of the organization a lot of the customers were like what are you guys are doing here so i explained to them what we're doing what why Armida was kicked out of the store and i'm like we're just asking for the truth 
So they, all of them, most of them, like six, seven persons that I talked to, they agree that we need to know the truth and how these animals have been treated. So it's awesome. We're yes. making it. Yeah. We're making the change. I just want to say how amazing it is to see women in leadership, like yeah. the, the women marshalling the protests, the women who spoke up, and this is something that I think touches a lot of people who identify as women's um, internally. I know dairy was a big thing for me, um, and there was a woman in the hutch, and just all of these ways that women are speaking out for women of other species, and just really want to thank the community and that we have that that vibe and, and spirit here that allows us to step up and have those things happen, and just big... Big shout out to, and also the, the tech team who like carried stuff. I don't know how your vibe yeah, tech feel team. Right now, but that was really great. So just so many people that stood, stood up and took leadership. Like, great job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were saying that we, uh, we loved how the women, the women ran the show and we made the men carry all the sound equipment. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Awesome. And then so we'll open the floor up to some announcements. Tanya? Yeah. Well, this was definitely a really exciting action and you know, we have many protests every month but we come together once a month to the big, big, big day of action. And we're going to have a March day of action and um, on the 25th, it's going to be a Sunday, it's going to be in San Francisco and it's going to be in favor of the San Francisco Fur Band. And I wanted, yeah. So there's going to be a vote in the end of March and we want to show that the public really supports this initiative. So I wanted to ask everyone for a favor. Please take your phone out if you're planning to come to the Day of Action. Do this on the live stream too. And yeah, on the live stream too, if you if you can come to the Day of Action, please go to dxc.io slash day of action and it's gonna come on your browser. But if you're not logged in into Facebook on your browser, you can look it up on Facebook as Make for a History, March Day of Action. So everybody, take your phone out. You can see here. This is the event page. Make for history. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, we want to have 200 people at this action. We're going to be marching. It's going to be really awesome. And you know, maybe San Francisco is about to become the first major city to ban first. So we need everybody out. Woo! 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 Got one right here. Uh, just a quick question. I'm wondering who's in charge of the chant, so to speak, because I have an idea for one. And yeah, you can yeah. talk to us about that. To you guys. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Perfect. We'll bring it to the oh, protest. Okay. Any other announcements any would like to announce? Anything? I just want to say, if anybody have any trouble finding the event page, come to me or Cassie or anybody else in the protest working group and we'll help you find the event page, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just a reminder for folks who are organizers or want to be organizers, there's a core training uh, on March 11th and 18th. It's broken up into two days because it's a long training. And there's a tier two protest training um, on the, what's that thing? Oh, also on the 11th. Sure, is it? So just, just to know there's more training opportunities. Nice, thank you, Chris. Cool, anyone else have any announcements? Uh, so tonight, uh, just a really like chill event. It's a uh, VOTB drinks. It's at a Hella Vegan. Mm -hmm. So it's also an opportunity to support a, a vegan business and uh, they have like, Different like craft beers, that sort of thing. So that's at six o'clock tonight at Hello Vegan and open. Thanks. Yeah, I have an announcement for a protest. If you can only make it to one protest, definitely make it to a day of action. But if you have some extra time and you're free next weekend, uh, we're gonna be meeting at a in Paul Street Bar Station at 2 p.m. and we're gonna have a really creative protest. The design working group is putting a lot of work into creating like a 16 uh, feet plate. And we're gonna have like a lot of activists lay in it and we're gonna try to show the public to, you know, try to relate to who's on our plate. So um, it's gonna be really visually powerful. So if you're free, you can come. If you have any questions about that protest, you can ask me. Thank you. Thank you. And I have one quick announcement as well. Um, I also organized for the group Anonymous for the Voiceless where we have the, uh, the TV screens and laptops and tablets and we show people footage and do compassion-based outreach and try to urge the public to go vegan. So we hold these events weekly here in Berkeley, and our next event is this uh, Sunday on the 25th. It's at 3.30 p.m. in front of Flying Falafel on Shattuck. And everybody's welcome to come. Even if you can't bring a device, you can still come and, you know, give someone a break or hold a sign or do some outreach and learn about some outreach and stuff like that, too. So hopefully we'll see you all there. Cool. Woo! And I have an announcement. 
We're all the way in May, but everybody should already be booking their calendars for the whole week because we are having the Animal Liberation Conference in Berkeley this May. And if you don't know what that is, you, a lot of you do. I'm sure a lot of you are already registered well in advance. But if you don't know, it's like a week of activism with all of these lovely people and hundreds more people coming to Berkeley from all around the world. And we're going to be taking actions like this one together. We're going to be doing trainings like on nonviolence and on open rescue. We're going to be doing socials and just everything that you want out of activism and out of everything will be there. So you can go to liberationconference.com and register there. And you should register in the next couple of days because the the price right now is really cheap, but it's going to go up March 1st. So go register today and register all your friends who are coming with you. All right, folks, I'm going to end it there and ask all of you to go to liberationconference.com yourselves because the Liberation Conference is going to be a historic event. We're going to be doing things that have never before been done in the history of the animal rights event. Stay until the last day because last year we took over Slaughterhouse, shut it down, started taking the animals out. This year we're going to do something even more impressive. We want every single one of you to be there to take advantage of that opportunity to be a part of history. But the other thing is stay tuned this week because we're going to have a huge announcement where uh, there's going to be something, someone really incredible at the Liberation Conference there this year with us. Um, someone who's never come to the Liberation Conference before will be there fighting with us, speaking with us, marching with us, taking action with us. So stay Stay tuned for the announcement. In the meantime, if you want to be part of the Liberation Conference, you only have a couple days at liberationconference.com before the price is going to go up dramatically. So do it. Um, get a couch on Couch Surfer. The, the costs aren't going to be too bad if you find a couch to sleep on. It's going to be an amazing week of activism. We're going to do stuff like what we just did today. And so I want to see every single one of you there. And if you come, make sure you introduce yourself to me because I want to meet every single one of you face to face and shake your hand for being amazing activists for animals. And for all the trolls on the live stream, I love you guys too. I think you're awesome. I'm sure your heart's in the right place. And I love a chance to talk to all of you as well because I believe that everybody has compassion in their hearts. And as long as we awaken that compassion and show people the cruelty that's happening behind closed doors, we can change the world. Okay, guys, we got to take a group photo. So I'm going to close things off. Thank you all for being here. And I'm going to make my last request again. Please hit the share button right now. Share the live stream right now because if you share it, many more people will see it. And even after this live stream is over, it'll make a difference if you share the live stream right now. So is everyone sharing? Can you all share? Do something for me. Hit that share button. Sarika, are you sharing it? Sarah, are you sharing it? Anita, can you share it? All right. Well, thank you all very much. I'm going to close things off and I'll say good afternoon and goodbye.